This is Diesel Talk. Hey, welcome to episode four of Diesel Talk. Um, I'm going to do four questions today, opposed to the three I normally have been doing. And um, two of them have to do with having white smoke in the exhaust. I'm going to talk a lot about that and kind of the principles in the first one we can apply in the second question. Uh, third question has to do with a crankcase filter. And the fourth question has to do with doing a top end oil change, which I had never heard of. But um, apparently some people do it with their power strokes. And someone wanted to know if that applies to cat engines. So let's get on with the questions. Here's the first question. Hello, my friend. I'm Julian from Argentina. And maybe you can help me with my truck, C10 engine. Makes a heavy white smoke when it cold start. Can you make a video? Many thanks and nice videos. All right, so this person has a Cat C10 engine and he's getting white smoke during startup when it's cold. And he wants to know what could be causing that. Well, let's address his question directly. And typically white smoke when it's started up after it's sat for a while is caused by a leaking injector. What will happen is the injector will drip overnight a little bit of fuel into the cylinder or multiple cylinders if we have multiple injector leaks. And what will happen then is when you fire it up, since that cylinder has some fuel in it, a large amount for a cylinder that's starting up cold, it will it won't burn all that fuel that's in the cylinder what it'll do is kind of just launch it into the exhaust and that'll come out as white smoke that's kind of hard to troubleshoot as far as um, identifying which injector is doing that unless you want to go through and pull your exhaust manifold off and then do the cold startup overnight and see which one kind of sprays out any moisture um, hopefully it's just fuel and that's typically what the cause is. It's typically a leaking injector. And that, that's going to answer his question directly. But what I want to talk about is exhaust smoke. Um, I'd mentioned in one of the previous videos that when you overfuel a cylinder, meaning you don't have enough boost and yet you're adding more fuel, you'll get black smoke. So you're probably wondering why excess fuel in the cylinder would cause white smoke too. Well, the reason it'll do that is when you are in a combustion process and you add a little bit extra fuel, in fact, too much fuel and not enough air, you're kind of turning that fuel into charcoal. That's kind of how they make charcoal is they burn wood under a low oxygen condition and it carbonizes it. At least that's how I understand how it's made. So what you're doing when you're overfueling a cylinder that's running normally, you'll get black smoke. Now, why would you get white smoke? Well, because you're not actually burning that fuel. You're dumping it into the exhaust stream or you're just pressurizing it and kind of sending it into the exhaust. You're not actually carbonizing it because you're not burning it at all. Now, what else will give you white exhaust? Well, pretty much any fluid that gets into that exhaust stream or cylinder that can't be burned. So that will include your coolant, that will include oil, and that can include fuel. Um, now what are some signs that it's coolant or oil or fuel? Well is it is it burning oil? Are you losing oil? Well then it's probably oil. You can also smell the exhaust. Um, you know coolant has like a sickly smell. Um, also I'll show you a video here real quick of um, what coolant burning also looks like. It's also white. It's also white smoke. But um, usually you'll be pressurizing the cooling system and you'll be losing coolant. So here you have an engine with white exhaust smoke. However, it doesn't have fuel problem. It has a cracked cylinder head. So that's actually coolant. Now if it's fuel, why would it be white if it's running normally? Well, that's an indication of not only are you overfueling, which could be caused by a damaged, heavily damaged injector, but you're also not burning 
in the combustion process at all, or else it would be turning black to some extent. So what could cause that? Well, heavy cylinder damage could cause that. So you have no compression, so you wouldn't have, you wouldn't actually be combusting any of the fuel. You would just be dumping it into a cylinder with no compression, which wouldn't ignite, and then dumping it out the exhaust. That could cause that. Um, you know, you could have, if you have heavy cylinder damage, you're going to be getting oil into the cylinder due to it not sealing right with the piston rings and then spraying fuel into the cylinder and then launching it out the exhaust. Um, you know, so pretty much white smoke, you need to look for clues as to what could be causing that. But typically at cold startup, um, it's usually just fuel. All right, good question. On to the next question. Hi, I have a Cat 3126 and a 953 loader. It white smokes, has a skip, and has a heavy fuel smell. Injector, possibly? Okay, so this question, um, similar to the first one, he has white smoke while it's running, though. Um, he also has an engine miss, and he also has a fuel smell in the exhaust. And yes, could it be an injector? Yes, yes, uh, number one cause of engine misses in diesel engines is an injector. So what he needs to do is do a cylinder cutout test, um, find out which cylinder is weak or misfiring, but don't just change the injector yet. You need to make sure you don't have cylinder damage. So do a compression check on that cylinder. You need to make sure you don't have damage to the valves or the valve train, because damage to the valves or the valve train could be causing a loss of compression in that cylinder and if you have a loss of compression it's not going to fire and that could be causing the white smoke condition so you might have a good injector you might have a damaged cylinder damaged valve train um, that pretty much answers that question the first question kind of tied in with the second question so but it's a good question nonetheless got a 2008 cat c7 acert does it have a crankcase filter if so, where? Okay, so it has a C7S serial number, C7 basically, if he's saying it's an A-cert engine. Um, now, people tend to think that A-cert engines are the same as regen engines. Well, technically all C7 engines, whether they were a Huey system with no regen system, or the later high-pressure fuel systems with regen systems, are also a cert um, I hear a lot of people say oh it's an a cert motor well that doesn't mean it has a regen system technically they're they are a cert engines but an a cert could also be like an MXS C15 um, a C7 is an a cert but also a C7S is an a cert um, you know an a cert doesn't specify whether it's an art head or not but it's an 08 so we know that it is a regen motor because 07 and later had regen motors so I'm, I'm assuming this person had or is getting high crankcase pressure codes and that is what's causing him to ask this question so we're gonna go on that assumption and uh, we know what assuming does but uh, I don't have any other information so it's best I can do so does a c7 or c9 um, regen motor have a crankcase filter? The answer is no. No, they don't. Um, the bigger engines, the bigger regen engines, do. So C11s, C13s, and C15s with regen systems do have crankcase filters. They sit up by the valve cover on the driver's side of the engine, so the cool side of the engine. Um, those do, do need to be changed, so if you're getting high crankcase filter codes um, you can change your crankcase filter on the larger engines however in the smaller engines you don't have that what they do is they have a closed breather system so I'm gonna show you a little video here I got from one of my older videos and I'm gonna show you where the line goes into the exhaust so this is from my air hammering stuck fittings video but what I'm showing you here is the crankcase breather line that's the one I'm pointing to with the laser pointer and here I am removing the fitting with an air hammer. Okay, so you see that line? If you trace it, it goes to the valve cover base. And there's a mesh breather in there that is not serviceable. You don't have to replace it. It's just to catch oil. So if you're getting high crankcase filter codes, 
Um, what you need to do is you need to remove that line. I believe it's an inch and three eighths. It depends. Um, it could be an inch and three eighths, inch and a quarter, inch and a half. Um, you need to remove that line and then check the fitting going into the exhaust. If it's carbonized, meaning it's completely plugged up, there's nowhere for those crank fi crankcase fumes to go. So what you need to do is clean that fitting out and then hopefully it has a clear exit into the exhaust. Because on these systems, opposed to the crankcase filter, or the, it doesn't have a crankcase filter, opposed to the crankcase fumes dumping into the atmosphere like they used to just with the rubber hose coming off the valve cover, these go from your valve cover base into your exhaust and then they go through the DPF and it's supposed to you know clean the fumes so you're not dumping uh, crankcase fumes into the atmosphere but the problem is those crankcase fumes hitting that really high exhaust temperature um, fitting they tend to stick to the sides and over time they'll build up a carbon coating and over time they can actually close off and you'll get really high crankcase pressures so you need to check that line Make sure that it is not plugged. If it is, you need to clean that line out um, and also check the fitting going into the exhaust stream. Now, two other things. There's a flapper valve inside where that connects to the valve cover base. If you remove the four or five, it's five bolts that hold the, um, the breather mesh on, there'll be a small uh, one-way flapper valve Make sure that hasn't cracked and is just closed shut. That can also cause it. Also, remember that these fumes are before your DPF. So the crankcase pressure is always going to be slightly higher than your DPF differential pressure. So if you have a plug DPF, that can be causing a high crankcase pressure code because the crankcase fumes have to push out of the engine and then they have to push through the DPF. So if you have a plug DPF with high differential pressure, that can cause your high crankcase codes. So just remember that you might not have a problem with the crankcase pressure or the fitting being plugged. It might be something with your DPF or your region system needs troubleshot. Oh, and I just wanted to mention, um, going back before I end that question, that on the larger engines, the ones with the crankcase filter, after the filter, those ones do vent the atmosphere. So the DPF wouldn't be a concern on if you have a C13 or C15 with a region system and the crankcase filters, because they do vent the atmosphere after the filter but not on the C7s and C9s. All right, that was a good question. Final Dash asks, do cat engines have top end oil that can be changed like on a power stroke engine, even though it hardly gets changed on its own because it circulates slowly? So I've heard from the Power Stroke Helps channel. Supposedly, it does wonders in the power stroke engines for making the injectors last forever as far as pickup trucks are concerned. All right, so this person asked about a top end oil change, which I had not heard before. Now that maybe that's popular in the power stroke field, um, which I don't, I'm not an expert in power strokes. Um, I do understand the Huey system because Cat uses those, and I know power strokes use a Huey system. Um, but I'm not as I'm not familiar with power stroke Huey systems, um, hardly at all. I've never really been into one. Um, other than some real basic services on them, stuff like that. Um, so this person asked me about this other person's channel and they talk about doing a top end oil change. So I watched the, the video on his channel and apparently on the power strokes you can change the oil in the Huey pump and that's supposed to somehow keep the injectors cleaner over time um, because I guess that oil doesn't get circulated through the engine as much. Well, on a cat with a Huey system, so we're talking 3126, C7, and C9, you do not have to do this. There's no top end service because the engine oil is the same oil in the Huey system. And that oil gets circulated really quickly through that Huey pump. If you've ever taken a valve cover off on a Huey system on a cat and ran the engine, you know that system is pushing tons of oil through those injectors at almost all times while it's running obviously so you don't have to worry about pulling the fitting off the Huey pump and sucking oil out and putting clean oil on just make sure your engine oil is clean and that will ensure that your injectors and Huey pump 
are getting clean oil because it that system circulates the oil very quickly. All right, well that does it for diesel talk number four. I hope you enjoyed the uh, the video, and I will catch you next time. Thanks.